All right, uh, hello again. This time we will focus on another aspect of the new Sky system. This time it's, it's uh, time we explore animation. Uh, there are a couple of things you can do with it, of course. The traditional type of uh, animation, uh, which will be something like this. You've got some clouds moving sideways from left to right, and you see them change shape. They also cast shadows on each other. They're being lit by the sun. And you can change, of course, as you saw in earlier tutorials, you can change what time of day it is, and the sun goes up, it changes color, it goes down, etc. Um, but so this is one of the straightforward ones going sideways. But you'll also be able to change the direction of the wind, when, which way these clouds move. Like, for example, here, uh, let's move, zoom in a little bit. Here we are having them move away from us. Right? And you could, of course, reverse this animation or... Um, just to have them move in the other direction if you wanted to dive into those clouds. But there are a number of other things you can do too. This one here is a short one um, showing moves uh, clouds moving up. And uh, you can probably see using this to create some sort of a cloud or smoke, some patterns, some animations that could be used in, a con in conjunction with some landscape or some building that's uh, burning or something like that. Uh, let's see some other examples here. This one is a little bit too fast. Uh, we're doing some tests to see which direction I want to move and what parameters to use. And I'm using fairly small resolution, low resolution, because it does take a little while to render those. These are volumetric clouds, and it does take quite a bit of memory and time to render. But uh, yeah, hopefully you can see some interesting use cases here. Uh, let's see perhaps just one or two more. Um, there's some other interesting patterns. You see the sun was up there, uh, but the clouds can go up or down against us, you know, towards us. Uh, let's see, perhaps one more. I think we've done, oh yeah, this one we haven't done. It's some really wacky stuff too. <laughs> right, so depending on how you, you bend the extremes here. I don't know if that might be some light smoke coming out of a cigarette or something like that. Or some hot coals. Anyway, there's lots of different ways to use this thereafter, but let's see, how do we create this in the first place? Like this one here, going from left to right. And so, what I'm going to do is start with a, a stored animation that's uh, a bunch of blanks. So, nothing in there yet. And it's fairly low resolution, because I'm not on a fast PC. Uh, you might find it okay to go with higher resolution. Initially, when you test, it's probably uh, a good idea to experiment with low resolution. All right, so let's have a look at how to create this sky, but not just as a static image, but as an animation, and uh, learn from that how to control in which direction the wind is blowing and what's, what type of uh, shapes we might have or other uh, changes in color, fog distance, and so on. So let's dive right in here. I'm going to load the empty animation. That one has only 123 frames. Um, I think. <laughs> Let's go and double check on that. You can go to the last, last one here. And yes, I'm on frame number 122. So the first one is frame number um, zero. And there you go. <clears throat> and of course, you create that very lazily, very easily. You create an animation by telling it how many frames you want. One, two, three. Quick with the left hand and boom, done. Okay, so we have this. And that's the one I stored here also. You do that from stored animation. And again, keep the initial image somewhat low resolution. I think here I have under the image info, it shows 300 or 360 by 270. Am I reading this right? It's early morning. I had only one sip of my coffee. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, filter <coughs> the render sky, new sky filter. And now it remembers here a bunch of settings I had. I'm going to go and reset it. When you click the X here, that will reset it to default. So then you can go back in, render, filter, and now we see <coughs> the default setting. Um, uh, normally we would click OK once we have the class we want. There's not much showing here. Uh, we are on turbulence. Uh, maybe I'm still looking up too high here. Maybe that did not get reset. Yeah, yeah. OK, so here we go. Uh, I had been looking at the zenith. Let's go sideways, maybe. Let's see, where is the sun? It's probably down here somewhere. If I go with the time down to, yeah, now it's uh, close to sunset. 
7 no that's early morning let's go to the other side there you go so uh, 7 o'clock ish the Sun must be visible here somewhere probably on the right side and there it is there she is okay so now we have a couple of other parameters uh, we have the Sun going up and down uh, let's keep it right up here for now and then let's have the fog distance uh, this one allows you to go a little bit farther but it's not going to go super far so if you want the clouds to reach the horizon bring it down here and you have to make sure it's the same aspect ratio here it's not this one is a little bit taller than this one in terms of the aspect ratio so it might have a little gap at the bottom we'll, we'll fix that or cut it off or crop it resize it um, but the, the most important thing is what, what do you want to do here is focus on well how do you well, how how is the, is this going to move right i mean we have different types of clouds showing turbulence is the default let's stay with that iterations you can go with a little bit less so it'll go faster and you can later do a final render with the better quality more details uh the scale of the clouds uh if you make them small there's room for more of them if you make it bigger there's fewer of them but eventually some of them will be pretty big you can also increase the coverage and then there's also how high these clouds go so there's sort of a thickness to these clouds uh, let's not waste too much time about all these parameters what we want to see is movement so I'm gonna go actually move the cloud the Sun up here out of sight so the only thing we see is the clouds and I want them to move from left to right click the animate button now at this time and when you have the animate there's a couple of parameters you could interpolate from like the time the thickness could change there's uh, and with the time of course you would see the cloud the, the Sun moving and also the coloring uh, of the sky and the Sun changing uh, let's leave all these alone and focus on just the wind vector all right so now one thing we see is that the wind vector has uh, 0.07 a pretty large number compared to the others and uh, so this one here is probably going to be the dominant let's see what happens when I click OK it's now rendering with the dominant movement being left to right so that X value speed x is indeed sideways now that's the case if i'm looking in that initial direction if i'm actually looking in a different direction i might be seeing them moving towards me so this is not in my viewing space it's in the world space the clouds are moving i don't know what's that if the sun is down there in the west then this would be south to north and uh, let's keep give that a try okay so it's done it actually finishes the sky filter and now you can see that animation all right so that's one set of clouds and you know if that's the one you want you may want to have it higher resolution uh, resize it and re-render it it'll take longer of course let's go and uh, store this animation we might want to look back at it so let's go here that's number one all right I'm gonna get rid of the others here we don't really need those this was kind of experimental now let's see the same thing but this time filter render uh, sky we'll keep the same parameters right so we're not going to change anything in terms of the, the settings and even here we'll leave the speed but I want to look in a different direction so let's cancel and go over and look to the left see if I can have them now actually move towards me Right, so that's one way to do that that's not the only way and you may want to experiment with these numbers but leaving the numbers as is let's see what happens now sure enough we're now looking in the direction from where the wind is coming and so these clouds are now heading towards us and keep that in mind if you want to do something like a flight scene or a dog fight or something and you need to have some clouds where the camera is going to essentially follow the airplanes but you also want to actually make get the feeling of, of going through these clouds so that's that's one way to do that and we're done let's go review it quick you can zoom in it is fairly low resolution so you'll see a little bit of artifacts of the blockiness and the pixelation and so on of course there's a bit of process post processing we might want to do you could adjust the dynamic range so some of the darkers get darker some of the brighter gets brighter uh, you might uh, even change the hue maybe a different color right adjust hue saturation value and perhaps say you know what I like uh, this kind of sky or down in on, on Venus not on Earth <laughs> or on Mars 
so give it a, a different appearance there, less saturation, more saturation, maybe darker, and animate across that. So the entire sequence here is now a little bit different. Anyway, let's go and store this animation to, to disk. <clears throat> and so we can easily go back to the original, just review that. There you go. Or clear it. Don't really need to because it's going to replace, during rendering, it's going to replace the frames. But if it's distracting, we can, might as well just do that. So now here we go, render again. And let's see some more options we might contemplate. This time I'm going to go back to looking at it from the, um, from the main direction, the original, uh, where the sun is right there in the same lining line up and um, I'm going to uh, move the sun down a little bit so we can see it so a little bit up oh, that's not that's the time that moves the sun down and <clears throat> this time I want the clouds to not move left to right I want them to move to me and again that's something we saw earlier we could just look look in the other direction but if the sun is there and we want to keep the sun we can't look in the other direction we need to keep looking at the sun so we can control instead which way the wind is blowing right so when we look at this here this was the big number the dominant one I'm gonna make this one zero now and then the question is which one of these two is it that's bringing it to me if I if I increase these values so X was horizontal <clears throat> Y is most likely vertical now is it up or down well, we can set that we can answer that question let's go do this let's have it only move along the Y axis and a little bit bigger let's say similar to what the other one was earlier, just this one number here, and OK that. So what you see now is that these clouds are moving vertically. <clears throat> They're moving downwards. Right? So a positive Y axis here is actually going down into the vertical downwards. But this is something that could be quite useful to create some extra effect of turbulence or smoke. You can reverse it. You could give it, let's go cancel this. Uh, let's give it a negative value and go again <clears throat> and so now you see it moving up now it fades away about on the upper level but you can also increase the thickness of these clouds and you'll see basically some cloud patterns moving vertically that could be useful if you want to create some sort of smoke um, some sort of uh, vertical draft even not necessarily to see it but just as a, a, dis a turbulence uh, a map a displacement map that you can then apply to another scene and you'll see it, it will appear as if there's like hot air, uh, like in the desert or something like that. All right, let me cancel this one because one I really wanted to know. Let's keep this vertical direction zero. And I think I wanted this one here to be fairly, fairly, uh, fairly high value for the uh, Z axis. So in this direction, we should see it move towards us or away from us. There you go. So the x-axis would initially, in the initial view, would move it sideways. The z-axis brings it in or out to us. Right, so if we, if we have it, this is the positive value. It comes towards us. And let's say we actually wanted it to f fade away, go away from us. Uh, so I'm going to cancel that. Again, we could give it a negative value. And maybe a little bit faster. Let's make it twice the speed and go. Oh, actually, I wanted one more thing. I wanted to move this down a tad so it's reaching the horizon at the bottom here. And we could make it go a little bit faster too by reducing the fog distance so that it's not, um, it doesn't have to render quite that much. You can see here in the preview, we're reaching around here, we're reaching the, the fog a little bit earlier now. So that, that might help in rendering it faster. Again, this is for testing and you can reduce the iterations, you can play with these numbers a little bit until you see, okay, that's going to be fast enough for testing various settings. And then when you, when you know what you need for these numbers, you do your final render at a higher quality, higher resolution, more details and so on. So here we go. Let's go render that. <clears throat> and so, yeah, this one is taking a little bit longer. And uh, again, it would be nice to be on a fast computer. This one's about four or five years old. It's a i7. I think of the 9000 series. So it's gone and out of five, four numbers or four, four or five generations since then. And not only the CPU is faster, but also the memory that goes with it. Um, you can have much faster RAM. 
And that makes a big impact. The speed at which all these multi-threaded computations are happening is quite typically going to be impacted by um, by the, the the RAM speed. So if you look at the task manager um, under performance, you'll see um, there's quite a number of threads. I have 12 logical cores, and some of that is active. The speed of the memory. This one here is only at uh, 26. Back then, that was great, but 2600 megahertz, <clears throat> it's uh, it's not very fast these days. You you will find gaming PCs at uh, 5500, even up to 6000 megahertz on DDR5, and I would I would assume it's going to be at least twice as fast just because of that. Plus the processor and the number of CPU cores. I don't know if you multi-thread it to whatever you have. But it's definitely, uh, <clears throat> this is not the fastest imaginable. Anyway, we've, we're done here, almost finished with this animation. <clears throat> and then, of course, one of the things, you, one of the reasons why you do these sometimes is that you, you don't want to just have this one thing. You want to create a looping animation. Right? And so what you do with that is you, well, first of all, before you mess with it, let's go store it so you have a safe copy. That's on disk, so that if the program crashes or your battery runs out or something, you still have it on disk and you can recover it. Um, so here we now um, want to right-click and make it loopable. And there's a couple of things you could do before that. First is maybe reverse it. If you decide actually you wanted the movement in the opposite direction, right? so there's a reverse of the frame sequence. Um, and then you could say, well, that's fast, a little bit too fast. Let's do a time stretch. And that's one of the ways we have a, another one, which is the motion prediction module. But this one here is a quick one. Let's make it uh, 1.5 times, about 200 frames, so 234 there, uh, with a frame blending, right? And that's the whole reason to do it, is that, that we get some extra frames in between, or so it looks. Uh, and then so it's a little bit slower and lasts longer and now we have actually the luxury of doing this make loopable because when you do a make loopable you take the total number of frames which is 234 here's the last one 233 and you divide by two or somewhere in between here you want to transition so a portion of the animation is going to be sacrificed or dedicated to blend out while blending in on the corresponding side of the same number of frames. So if you only had, let's say, 20 frames here, it would fade out and fade in over the first 20 frames. Um, and uh, so you can easily do that over about half of the animation if you don't need the whole length. And then so now this time, that means you have a looping animation. <coughs> you, you, can, you can see things fading, but you won't see a cut. You won't see a sudden jump or anything like that. And so if you don't pay attention, you, it seems like it's just con continually going. And sometimes these can be really useful as a, as a background animation of sorts. All right, so that's uh, some of the basics for the um, <coughs> for the animation. Let's go store this to disk. Um, that's just for the for the form of it. Uh, restore that original blank animation. And now this time we'll explore some of the other settings in the sky. The sky filter has quite a number of parameters you can fiddle with. And we know now how to animate and what, what direction it's going to move, but let's also see, well, what's it going to look like? And so there are some parameters. Uh, let's go through all of these, the four different settings, the Perlin noise, turbulence, rigid, uh, and maximized. So I'm going to go with Perlin first. That one is pretty dense. It's the thickness and it's the coverage that's too high. So I'm going to reduce this. And that's, that's quite a useful noise system. And you can uh, play with the persistence to get a little bit more details, perhaps granularity, and the animation will look interesting in terms of the um, in terms of the turbulence. Um, let's set the scale. Let's set it like this. Iteration. Let's go a little bit lower, so it's it's a little bit faster for the initial test. Uh, and then one thing I want to do during animation, I want the sun to actually move. So we will set that and we want to get an idea of how much we want to move. So this here, if we want the sun here, it's going to be about 5 o'clock, 17 hours, right? This is a European clock system here. Uh, and then you go down to about 19. So we have about two hours time frame for the sunset. And you can even have the sun below the clouds and to get some 
some <coughs> some light lighting from the underside here uh, but so we need to remember that number here from about 17 hours to about 19 almost yeah eight o'clock let's do that all right so we will do that let's go animate and we want the clouds this time to move both sideways and to us so we know we need to increase that initial value here too let's make it 0.1 and 0.1 so it goes in both directions not toward not away but towards us so that's a positive value now uh, <clears throat> and we might also do a little bit of updraft movement so zero point let's give it all a zero point something zero point one but the most important part now is the time will change so remember those numbers we had about 17 hours i think that was the current value actually showing here and then we want to go all the way to about what was it eight o'clock i forgot already anyway you you will want to remember these numbers so you can set them here uh, you could also change other things like uh, during the day like uh, with sunset maybe the cloud pattern disappear so you can make it get thinner right and then also another thing the cloud coverage could be higher initially could be a, a very dense set of clouds and then it just gradually disappears to smithereens and go <clears throat> so now you can see a couple of things happening the sun is gradually lowered gradually coming down the clouds are moving and not just sideways not just towards us but a combination of both and we also see the density or the appearance of these clouds change a little bit uh, it seems like it's slower when the sun is coming from, from below or maybe it's because again we also changed those other pa parameters uh, the cloud coverage the, uh, you can see there's more clouds here so let's go <clears throat> and preview this quickly all right, so we're going to keep all that and store it store this to disk so we have this one here and so that was with the Perlin noise and of course you'll want to experiment with more granularity more detail um, but try to stick with the parameters and also switch to turbulence and see if that actually brings something interesting the problem is that we at the end of the animation so the Sun is back down and we like eight o'clock here at uh, 20, 20 hours and you, you do have the the final <clears throat> uh, density also the coverage amount uh, so a number of these things here won't work uh, you'll want to to increase the, the thickness of these and get it back to something maybe we want to change all the parameters maybe we'll focus on just one at a time like the the time it is the time of day right so we will do that and It'll be about uh, 17 hours going down to about 18, uh, 19 hours. There you go, just about sunset. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> that's, that's where maybe we want to also add a little bit more on the iterations, tend to make it go faster if you have them very low. But of course, they're very simple clouds at that point. Although you could change the scale also and get a little bit more detail of you know, smaller clouds. Uh, ultimately for the final render you'll probably find yourself in a need to increase that iteration um, a value here and then here I'm gonna reduce the coverage a little bit and increase the thickness so this one here let's bring it down a little bit let's go animate that this is turbulence mode and we'll keep the same um, directions of things moving and go Oh, and I forgot to change, silly me, in the hurry here, I forgot to change the time. So initially, this, these are actually reset, so I need to remember what I had if I want to really compare. Cloud thickness, I didn't want to move anywhere. Cloud coverage, I didn't want to move anyway. So I'm going to keep this here from 17 roughly to, what was it, 28 o'clock or so. There, something like that. All right, let's go. So now we have sort of a sunset animation. You can tell the sun is gradually moving down. And soon enough reaching the bottom where it seems to be going slower because probably because there are some shadows being cast on each other. These clouds are now lined up as seen from the sun and there's a little bit more computation perhaps needed for how it, it hits it. And this is a very dense cloud system. Obviously, we could probably have given it a little bit less in the thickness or in the uh, 
coverage amount. All right, and when this stops here, this is testing, this is experimental. So when it's going too slow, I'm going to click here on cancel and say cancel and cancel. So we have an animation, it's not perfect, it's not done, but we, and the remaining part here we might ignore. In fact, if you want to delete that, there's a little bit of editing you can do. All right, if you want to go up to here and make sure you find that frame, there it is. You can go to this frame and say that's the last one I want. This one I don't want anymore. So let's go set an in marker and then all the way to the out marker at the very end. Uh, you can set here the out marker. You could actually select the whole thing. But when you set the out marker, it goes from the in to the out. And you could have also selected it this way. Uh, or you could select it right here with the select button. You go boom to the right end and you say select all this, that entire group. Now you can delete that block, delete this block. So now we have just the remaining part of the animation that we're really interested in keeping. And so go to the first frame and play it. And you can see some very turbulent, <laughs> quite noisy cloud here. All right, this, that's because we moved really fast on that. All right, anyway, let's store that and do one more, two more actually. Uh, we wanted to also see what's it look like when we have the next parameter. Uh, again, we needed uh, the, ideally the same number of frames. Um, so I'm going to go back to the original and render, um, render sky. And this time we will go to uh, rigid and definitely need to reduce that coverage amount here and also the thickness and let's see keep it in range um, scale thickness coverage yeah and you may see here there's some some interesting little pattern of turbulence it seems and so that's that's where you might actually find some other use uh, for that but I'm going to keep this in reason here for the fog. Keep the sun up there. And this time we'll, maybe we'll want to have a look a little bit to the side. Something like this. But uh, let's see what we can do with that persistence. And the scale of these. Yeah, it looks like some nice little bridges showing here. So that could be that could lend itself to interesting other type of smoke or or, or cloud patterns here, just weird stuff, you know, turbulent. Um, let's see if we increase the thickness and increase the iterations. Now it's getting interesting. Look at that. Um, all right, so let's go and animate that. And for this, <coughs> we will this one here. We will also go uh, from the current time to sunset at about eight o'clock and go now because we turned our head to look more to the right it's now a little bit more of a sideways motion and it's fast enough we can wait for this one to complete let me just pause the recording quick and come back when it's done and we're not done yet, but it's uh, getting close. We have frame number 90, 100. I think we have 123, so a few more. You can tell the sky color is already very reddish. The sun is below the horizon. There we go. And there you go. All right, so some other type of clouds, and you might find those interesting. So let's see if we store that to disk. And then there is perhaps one more that we haven't explored yet. Let's go filter, render, sky. By now we are experts. So there is the maximized version here. Um, in fact, you know what? Let me reset everything here, or almost everything, it seems. And so this time I'm going to go to maximized and keep these let's keep the default values for just about everything here except uh, we will again change the time to have a sunset here and then this time I'll actually use the default settings for the animation right so let's go dip. 
let's go um, time from almost noon to almost sunset let's go to about 19 hours almost eight o'clock let's go like six something uh, and the thickness this time we'll do a reduced thickness and the cloud coverage also reduced okay and uh, let's go this is the default setting um, let's go let's go with a little bit faster horizontal movement sideways and um, this one is the vertical um, we can keep this one fairly high gives it some nice turbulence and then this one is the movement towards us and we'll keep this one pretty low in fact let's make this one zero so it's just going sideways now all right and, and there are clearly there are a number of different effects and cloud patterns you can get from that and I'll let you explore um, hopefully you'll find something that you can use look the Sun is coming down right there hopefully you can use what you're looking for here for a particular pattern or, or level of cloud coverage rainy day and, um, and hopefully you have a system that's a little bit faster than mine so you can actually do this and enjoy that high resolution too uh, I will make this at high resolution for the final render uh, let's see here okay let's go animation store and so here we are we have now a couple of cloud systems and i'm gonna go do the final one again so let's go create a new thing here animation and set it to um let's do 1280 by 768 or by 720 actually so let's set it full hd no that's not full hd that's uh, hd uh, 1280 by 720 and uh, let's make it an animation of about five seconds at 30 frames per second so i'm going to create something that needs 150 frames and it's always good to have a few more let's do 159 why not and here we go so let's go <laughs> what we want on this one i'm gonna do uh, where i'm flying into the clouds so let's go render we've seen this before we should now know how to do this so i'm gonna go uh, i like the the turbulence the default is turbulence mode i like that one the best um <clears throat> but i but i will say that I, I like this one the best because i've mostly used that one and uh, well it takes a little while you need to experiment with them to see what works better for you uh cloud coverage let's start with very little cloud co coverage and then have it go up and also for the time we'll go actually from sunset or from maybe as we do a sunrise and we have something like the sun coming up so at first we have it very little clouds and then more clouds showing up coverage and thickness will increase okay so let's do that and this will definitely take longer to render it's a much bigger image but we do want the time to go from about sunset to um, you know mid-morning i mean it's not it's sunrise i want to simulate sunrise so it's going from the near the horizon going up um, and we could also do, go look in the other direction and actually have it go from like 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, but here I'm lazy. I'm going to keep it in this direction, just reverse the, the direction of the, the sun's movement. Uh, and then I'm going to have the cloud pattern initially very low, going pretty high. One thing that I would love to see is actually showing here in the preview while we're adjusting these for the animation. So that's something you have to do first. If you want to see what range is going to be useful you need to preview that by going out of here and actually increase let's say what is it the uh, the coverage you want to see whether that's good go to about 0.3 or 0.4 and then also the uh, the thickness if we're going to play with the thickness you want to have both of these and there you go so <laughs> that gives us a, a rough idea of what we need to do about 0.4 and 0.6 or 7 for the thickness so let's go and animate and so we have the time going here to about four o'clock oh, let's go even higher uh, the clouds going to 2.4 that's the coverage amount and the cloud thickness to about 0.7 there 
Um, we have the movement going sideways to the right. Let's make it a little bit slower. 0, 0.9 or 0.7, that was the default value. Let's keep the speed. Oh no, what did I say? I don't want to move it sideways. I want to move it towards me. Right? So I need that z-axis direction here. And I'm going to go negative on that. I'm going to keep this one 0 and have it move only towards me. Uh, there's a little bit of vertical, why not? Um, that one is actually going to be down if I leave it positive. So I'm going to keep it negative value. So it seems to be moving the cloud shapes upwards, but most importantly, it's going to be at high speed towards me. So I'm going to make this one a 0.1. All right, I think that's it. But you can tell now it takes a little bit longer to render. So patience is a virtue here. Oh, and it's moving the wrong direction. So I did actually get that one wrong. Did not remember it. We need to give it a positive here for the Z. Then we look like we're moving into that pattern. Um, let's go do that. <clears throat> so first cloud, first image. Second image, yep. Now we are moving towards this direction, or the clouds are flying towards us, and the sun at the same time is gradually moving up. All right, well, thank you for watching. Long tutorial, lots of things to experiment. Have fun, and do show what it is you're doing with it.